Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris. And I am Randy. And we are with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. And you are watching Marksman TV. Today I have another unboxing video for you guys. And also we got some pretty cool stuff in the shop. So if you guys want to see that, stick around. It's coming up right now. Alright guys, jumping into this, this video is coming a little bit later in the week. Back on Tuesday, we actually got a ton of firearms in, but we were so swamped we could not actually get the time to do a video for you guys. We were here until like 8 or 9 o'clock, even without filming a video, just unboxing everything. Because it is always our priority to make sure that we're getting to things and informing the owners of the firearms the day that they come in, so people aren't sitting around waiting with, you know, trying to think about what's going on. With that being said, a quick announcement at the head of this video is we are currently looking for a couple people to join our team and to come work with us. So Randy is actually in the process of uh, trying to find some people for that. So if you are in the area and you're interested in working with us at the fun establishment, uh, Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com, please go ahead and email Randy. His email address will be down in the description uh, of this video. Uh, or if maybe you're not local, but you know some people who are local, uh, feel free. We're not looking for anybody to work remotely. We actually need people here to help in this store with a bunch of stuff. So um, again, look down in the description. So with that fun part out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this video. Okay guys, first let's just talk about a couple that have come into the store recently and also some that we got in uh, on Tuesday that wanted to cover. But first of all, this one actually came into the store today. I actually am a big fan of these. I have one of these myself. This is a Century C308, really built off of the Set Me Model C pattern, 762 by uh, by 51 uh, NATO, so the 308 essentially. Um, these are actually put together or were put together by PTR Industries. They had a polymer stock in a woodstock configuration with the Navy uh, trigger group housing here, here, which is polymer. Mine I actually got on HK parts, the um, semi-automatic uh, metal trigger group or trigger frame. Uh, so you can actually pick those up. They're kind of expensive, like two or $300, but really cool. Um, these actually are really reliable in my experience and not super expensive. Uh, so anyway, I always really enjoy getting these in. Um, they've been kind of tough to get lately new, so really on the used market, I see a bunch of them come in. Oh, uh, blue box, Colt. Now this box is likely not original to the gun. I'm sure it's not. What we have here is a uh, six inch blued Colt Python. Uh, Colt released the Python in 1955. Um, it was kind of targeted at the police market, did not fare very well, it just uh, quite honestly was too nice of a gun. Um, and the price point was, was a bit high for uh, utility type use for the police market. Back in the first few years, uh, these were all hand fitted by master gunsmiths. Uh, this is an earlier model. Um, 1959. 1959 fourth actually. Fourth year of production. Fourth year of production uh, in very good condition. Um, these uh, have, have been very popular throughout the years and the older ones like this uh, can be very valuable depending on the condition of the gun. So in 2020 they released the new one uh, which a lot of people thought would put a squeeze on the value of these older ones but watching the market I haven't really seen that happen very much so these really nice older you know blue or the nickel pythons are just still incredibly collectible so Really cool to get that in. So we got that in from a viewer through WeBuyGuns.com. And last up, this is actually a really cool one that came in from a local customer. This is an HK VP70Z, uh, which was actually came to the market from HK. If I can get this through here, I'll just show you inside the box. Uh, came to the market from HK in 1970 and was produced all the way up until 1989. This was actually the first really commercially successful polymer frame handgun, even predating the Glock firearms to magazines. Now, one of the really, really cool things about this is the military and police configuration came with a large polymer type stock with a selector on it, which allowed this to fire in full auto. So, of course, unfortunately, that is not the one that we have here today, but these are still really, really uncommon. I've 
this is probably the second one I've ever had in here, and this one with the original box and stuff is pretty unique. It is a straight blowback with a fixed barrel, similar to like a PPK design, and a much larger beefier frame. Uh, 18 round capacity, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they're marked, but it's about an 18 round capacity. So anyway, very, very good condition in the box. Very unique and pretty rare HK handgun. So that'll end it up with what we have from what came in the store and from earlier earlier this week on We Buy Guns. So let's go ahead and break into those uh, boxes we got in today. All right, first up is a box of guns from uh, one of our customers in Texas. Feels like there's quite a few in here, but we'll see. Four, it looks like. It's a Rock Island something. CZ. Yeah, there's a bunch of guns in here. Kimber. Springfield. Okay, let's go through these one at a time. This again came to us from a customer in Texas, so thank you so much for that. First up, we have a Glock 44 and 22 long rifle. Uh, these are very popular. This one has, uh, this one came with three magazines. Uh, all the back straps, everything with it. Uh, this is Glock's run at a 22 long rifle. They make an adapter for the Glock 19 that you can convert it to a 22 long rifle. This has the uh, look and the feel of a Glock 19. It's obviously much lighter. It's mostly polymer. Uh, even the slide, uh, the outside of the slide is a polymer material. Uh, but a very good training handgun, very fun to shoot and much less expensive to shoot than the Glock 19. And what do you call the condition on that one? I would call this excellent. That yeah, customer said very good, so um, thank you for being... I don't see a, any marks on it at all. Yeah, so he understated it a little bit. There's a nice American flag back plate yep. on there too that he added to it. So anyway, very cool. So we're good with that one. Let's move on to what's next. All right. What's in the box? Next up, we have something from the Springfield variety. This is, we just had one of these in here today. Is that the same caliber? It, I am assured that it is not. Okay, it's not 10. No. No, it is. It's a 10 millimeter. Oh. We just had one of these in here today that we sold, and now we have another. So. This is a 10 millimeter, um, the XDM Elite optics plate, 10 millimeter. Um, really not else a lot to say about it. So with the optics plate cuts on the top, this is in the compact size capacity on these guys, a little bit stiff on the mag release. It's 10 rounds, uh, fiber optic front sight, and overall the condition on this, I would call excellent also. It's so a little bit of wear up on top of the barrel, but again, that's gonna happen even with brand new firearms we have in inventory that they're handled a couple times, they start to get wear up there. So I don't really worry too much about that, but I would say overall, this is excellent condition. Uh, what do you think, Randy? I would agree, excellent. I mean, I can see them saying very good because of the, the barrel wear, but uh, um, I would say excellent. Yep, and he said very good, so again, uh, yeah, we'll definitely, we're in the same ballpark there, so I appreciate that. Let's take a look at what's next. We have a Kimber uh, K6S Target uh, Revolver in 357 Magnum. Uh, these are beautiful guns, uh, beautiful finish, um, nice wood grips, it's very nice, very attractive. Uh, Fiber optic front side, adjustable rear. The Kimber came out with the K6S as is their introduction to the revolver line. Gosh, it's been about three years ago now. And they are very popular. They still don't get as much press as like maybe the uh, Smith & Wesson and the, even the Colt offerings. Uh, but for people who know what they are, I am a, actually a really big fan of that revolver. Um, so I would, I would put it up in comparison to things like the Ruger uh, SP-101 and, and about that size. The quality is there, you know, like a Smith revolver 
or uh, something comparable. So really cool revolvers. What do you think about the condition on that one? Uh, I would again say excellent condition on this. And he said excellent, I agree with that. So yeah, even just looking at it from a couple feet away, it looks very, very clean. All right. up we have it looks like a CZ75 PO1 compact. I get a lot of these guys and this is a decocker model 9 millimeter um, very nice weight and balance of these things of course you know the um, what makes these things so popular is the slide fitting inside the frame giving it a very very narrow slide profile keeping very minimal muzzle flip and really, really good recoil impulse, which is one of the things that makes the CZ75 series handgun so popular. But uh, if we get into condition on this, I'm gonna say, again, excellent on this one. What do you think? I would agree, uh, excellent condition on this. Yep, and that's what he says as well. So, cool, or continue to stay on the same page. Let's keep moving on the last one. So here we have a Rock Island 1911. Um, this is a very nice, has G10 grip, skeletized trigger in the hammer, extended fever tail, ampidextrous safety, front serrations, uh, fiber optic front sight. Um, uh, you, know, I, you know, I'm a big fan of 1911s and I, I do not have a Rock Island, but I, every time I look at these, I think, you know, dollar for dollar, they're a very good value. I think for what you're getting, um, they're pretty rock solid. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, made in the Philippines, but they're, you know, very, very, you get a lot for your money on the Rock Island stuff. They're really watered down, like A1 1911s, uh, very affordable. Then they have their, sort of coming out with the more loaded models in the most, you know, maybe the past two to three years, they've become really popular. The pricing's up a little bit on them, but still they're well under a thousand dollars. And so good, good for what you get. So what do you think about the condition of that one? Um, I'm going to have to stay the course and say excellent. Yeah, that's what the customer said. So again, we're right in line there. Thank you so much to our customer in Texas for sending these to us and we'll keep moving on. All right, guys, up next we have one that comes to us from Florida. So we'll go ahead and jump into this. Unless there's more than one. I think it's just three. One. Behind shipping rag number one is. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. It's a Remington R1 1911 that has some custom engraving on it. Uh, it's a Centennial, it's a Centennial 1911, 1911 to 2011. Nice. That is very nice. So that's part of the R1 series, and yeah, it's yeah, the Centennial model, very cool. And you're a fan of the R1. Yes. R1s are 80 series, they've got the safety plunger, right? I got it. Yes, it's got yes. The, you got the safety plunger in here, which is one difference between like a Springfield 1911. The engraving on that is actually really attractive. What do you think about condition on that? Uh, I would call condition excellent on this. Yeah, and I believe that's what the customer has said. Yes, and I agree. It's very, very oh, excellent condition. So. Yeah, I am a fan of R1s. I, I have a couple. Uh, I have an R1S stainless that I carry quite a bit. Uh, it's kind of my go-to 1911. Um, Remington kind of got a bad rap because of you know the bankruptcy. There were a lot of quality issues before that. But I'll tell you, some of the 1911s that they put out, you know, prior to having those issues. Especially the green box guns. Yeah, especially the green box guns are awesome. And I, like I said, I own a couple of them. Um, they're very nice, very nice triggers, even for an 80 series. Um, and they're just great guns. And they get overlooked many times because of the stigma of uh, what some of the Remington has now. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's move on to the next one. Go ahead and open it up. I'll put that in there. 
to is a 1911. 1911 A1. Uh, this is a Springfield Armory. Uh, so this one is uh, a little more basic of a gun. It's, uh, it's Parkerized. I have U.S. grips. I think it's made to kind of uh, imitate the early 1911 uh, A1. 1911 World A1. War II configuration. Yes. For sure. Of course, in World War II, they would have had the more the keys, fibrite grips. They wouldn't have had checkered walnut. That would be more World War One. And of course, they never said U.S. on them. So. Other than the grips, it actually looks pretty close to like just a 1911A1 from World War II. What do you call the condition on that one? Uh, I call the condition on this one, and I'm going to be a little harsh on it. Um, that's, um, uh, I'm going to say, probably good condition. Uh, there's a, a major uh, takedown mark, take, take down mark uh, that's all the way through the parkerizing. Um, you can see some holster wear, uh, some marks up here. Um, so I'm going to. I'm gonna go with good. Yeah, and I agree, and that's actually what the customer rated it at, so we're right there in line with okay. one another. So, yep, we're good on that one. What's, right. what's the last one in there? Well, to mix it up a little bit, Chris, we have a 1911. <laughs> and uh, this one is actually my favorite Remington. Um, this is a 1911 R1S. Um, and I'll tell you, the, the finish that you get on these things for the price point is really incredible. Um, uh, I've been known to dress mine up with some custom grips, but um, yeah, the R1S, uh, everything I said about the Remington R1 uh, and it's stainless steel. So to me, that's a bonus. I like stainless steel guns. Yeah, and what do you rate the condition on that one? Uh, I don't see any marks on this. I would say this is excellent. Yeah, and that's what the customer rated it at. So very, very good. Customer from Florida, we thank you so much. And we will get these logged in and let you know through the system. So let's move on to the next one. All right, next up is from Arizona. Smith & Wesson. This looks actually like an older one. This is a 22A1. These, gosh, I, the 22, do you know much about these in the 22 Target? Not a lot. Um, the Smith & Wessons are the 22s they were I never the, uh, the, um, These did not have that great of a reputation, the A-1s, and they are not very expensive on the market. These were, what was, did these replace the Victory or the Victory? No, the Victory replaced this. Yes. Yeah, so the Victory is what is out now, not these. Um, good for what they are, but I think they were just outcompeted by things like the, the Mark series from Ruger. Um, this is an older one. I wonder if there's a production date on it. You could tell that this is probably early 2000s or maybe late 1990s. Sure, by the box. Yeah, by the box, I'd probably say that. But actually, jumping into condition, I'd probably say good. What about you? I agree. There's some marks on it. They take down. Does that look right to you? Looks like it's. Yeah, they're a little wonky on the yeah, take downs. Yeah, kind of the on take down's a little strange. And they're they're not real easy to take down. So. But neither was the Ruger. Let's see. That is the correct. earlier ones. Until we get the Mark IV. Until you get to the Mark IV. He said very good. Again, if we were like within one, you know, uh, uh, condition parameter apart, I'm not going to, you know, have any heartache over it. But uh, I'd say good. Customer says very good. So I mean, it's close enough. But we get these things in from time to time. Um, I don't really know too much about them. I'm not really into the rimfire type stuff. And even you're into the rimfire type stuff and you don't really, you never really mess with these that much. But anyway, they're cool pistols, a nice older Smith that they don't make anymore, but there's that one for you. So big thank you to our customer in Arizona. We will let you know it's here. All right guys, the last up, who's this one from? Uh, customer in Missouri. At Dan Wesson. I know what this is. Ooh. Ooh. It's 1911 day. That's what we'll 1911 day. That's what we'll title it. You know that I like that. I like the sound of that. I like the yeah. sound of that. Wow. <laughs> That's a really nice looking handgun. A very nice uh, 
Dan Wesson 45 ACP. It's got the bobbed uh, grip on it, which yeah. was a design, it was developed by Ed Brown, I believe, on the bobbed grip. I always mm -hmm. loved that look on 1911s. Smith & Wesson incorporates that a lot on their E-Series guns. Of course, you get them on the Ed Browns, like the Cobra Carry, but yeah, I love the look of that. That's a nice looking handgun. Yeah, it has the uh, the match grade barrel. Uh, I'm sure the, the bushing is matching. Uh, this is the classic series, uh, some very, very nice wood uh, on the grips and an excellent finish on the gun. And this, yeah, the Dan Wesson, yeah, classic. Yeah, it's Smart Classic as an on on the other side. Yes, it's Smart yeah, Classic. Yeah, it's the classic line. Um, commander size, four and yes. quarter inch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very cool, 45 ACP, did we go over that? Yes. Okay, what do you rate the condition? Um, even though there's some wear on the barrel, um, that's normal. Uh, looking over the rest of the gun, I would have to say it's in excellent condition. And I would too, and that's what the customer rated it at, and that's a really cool handgun. So, that's a good note to end this on. That is a Dan Wesson Classic 1911, so. Yep. Alright, cool. We'll let you know it's here. All right, guys, well, that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us on this video. If you enjoyed, as always, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section. But we're going to go ahead and leave it off with that. So with that, I am Chris. And I am Randy. And you're watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time. <laughs> oh! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Running with scissors and playing with knives. <laughs> <coughs> hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on Marksman T. No. Two hours later. Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris. And I'm Randy. And you guys are watching Marksman T. Fuck. <laughs> hey guys, welcome. <laughs> I gotta say, Mar this is Chris. Marksman shooting. Okay. Packing peanuts. No. <laughs> 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 <laughs>